Hey, this is Ryan from rm-sounds.com, and in this video I want to show you how to do a legit tape stop effect in Ableton. What I mean by this is that distinct wind up or wind down that you get when you turn a record player on or off. Ableton has a very handy clip transposition envelope in every warped clip that can be accessed just by double clicking on a clip, turning on warp, selecting any warp mode other than repitch, clicking this little E down here, and then clicking transpose right here. At this point you can draw in any curve that you would like, and throughout the length of your clip it will rise and fall in pitch um, according to the curve that you've drawn. Now this is really handy for those quick and dirty pitch slides that you may want to do, but when you want that real authentic tape stop sound, this isn't going to work. And that's due to the fact that this works using time stretching, which will change the pitch of your clip while keeping the time in, in sync with the master tempo. Unfortunately, one of the characteristic sounds of the tape stop effect is that speeding up and slowing down of the audio. So this won't work for us. I'm going to turn warp off and get rid of this uh, sample window. In, uh, in Ableton, the way that I go about doing the tape stop effect is using Ableton's sampler instrument. This is a premium instrument from Ableton, so if you don't own sampler, this te technique can still be applied using a third-party VST sampler, contact or whatever, um, if you've got it, as long as it's got pitch bend. Now before I get into how this is done, I just want to play you a clip of this track that I'm working on. Um, it's not finished yet, but I figured it would be good for this example. Here we go. So there you go. I think the perfect spot for the tape stop effect would be in the transition from one section to another. Perhaps uh, one bar right about here. It would be awesome to have a little bit of a pitch down tape stop effect. So the way I go about doing this is to isolate the, the area where you want to do the actual pitch drop and isolate it from the rest of the audio track. And I'm going to do this by pressing Command J after I've highlighted it. And what this has done is consolidated that one bar. So now if I double click on it, you can see it's cropped the end, so there's nothing in that clip other than the one bar of audio. Um, and then what I do from there is I insert a new MIDI track and I drop a sampler onto that track. And then I drop that one bar clip into the sampler and from and once you do that you can delete it from the audio track. And then I highlight one bar in my MIDI track and right click towards the top of the MIDI track and select insert MIDI clip. Double click on that MIDI clip and draw a one bar long MIDI note on C3. This will ensure that you're playing back the, the audio in your sampler at the original pitch and speed. Now one other thing, if you go into the filter global, you're going to want to switch your volume to zero and this will um, play it back at the original volume. So now, now that I've set this up, you should hear a seamless transition from the audio track down to the sampler track for one bar back up to the audio track with no interruption to the audio. Perfect. So now what you're going to do is you're going to go back into the sampler and select your MIDI tab. In the MIDI tab, you will see a parameter called MIDI bend or sorry, pitch bend range. And you're going to crank that all the way up to 24 semitones. Close it back down, open your MIDI clip, and if you don't have your envelopes box open, you click this little E down here, and you can see right up front there's a pitch bend button that you can click on. It's pretty self-explanatory. From here, we're going to just draw in a little pitch bend down. 
not too far, maybe about maybe about there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw sort of an exponential curve. Um, I find it gives a little bit more of a realistic effect rather than just having a linear line from one point to another. And it's a shame that Ableton doesn't support curves, automation curves. I'm hoping that'll show up in Ableton Live 9. But anyway, we've got a nice curve here that'll start at the original pitch. Actually, it has moved off a little bit. Just going to bring that down to zero. So now it's at the original pitch, and then it's going to go through the bar, and towards the end of the bar, it's going to jump down to a much lower pitch. So to hear what that sounds like, Very cool. Um, sometimes, depending on the audio that you're working with, sometimes it's cool to do a volume decay as well. Um, but I'm not going to do that right now. I prefer it to not have the volume decay. Um, anyway, once you've got the pitch bend that you like, all you have to do is freeze the track and then just drag the clip back in your audio track and voila, you have your uh, tape stop effect in the audio track just to prove it to you So there you go another quick example um, it is really fun to when you're doing um, a Slice and dice technique like I showed in my last video. It's a, actually a really cool effect when you do it really quickly like if you select a kick or something so right on the beginning of bar 27 if I do just uh, maybe two bars there or two beats there sorry command J drop that into my sampler delete that insert the MIDI clip draw it in one bar on C3 open my envelopes go to pitch it's cool just to uh, go down really quick and then bring it back up towards the end of the bar end of the two beats maybe now this is a an example of where the volume envelope is fairly important so you want to have the volume go down all the way when it's at its lowest and then come back up when it starts to pitch up again. So it takes a little tweaking, but that's the general idea. Um, so if I liked that, I would once again just freeze and drag back up. And I can delete this track and I got my pitch drop. So you get the idea. That is how to do a legit tape stop in Ableton.